Have you ever wondered what it would be like to live debt free, to not have a house payment, to not have a car payment, to not have student loans? Are you somebody that struggles and you're getting crushed under the weight of financial burdens that society has placed on you? you? They're telling you you have to keep up with the Joneses or the Kardashians for that matter. If that sounds like you and you want a way out, today is your day, so stay tuned. I'm gonna share with you my five-step plan for getting out of debt fast. And it's just for you and it's just for those who have been struggling. I want you to know there's hope and I'm gonna show you how to do it, so stay tuned. I'm Erin Cook and I help people find happiness and joy and freedom in their daily lives by simplifying and systematizing their businesses and their daily activities. And today that's what I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you what I think you should do tonight starting right now to help you climb out from underneath that debt because it is possible. And the problem is the whole world is telling us it's not possible. They're saying to millennials, hey, look at all this student loan. You're gonna die with all this debt. There's not a way out. They're telling people you can't afford a house what seems like a billion dollar mortgage, right? You gotta pay it off in 30 years. The interest is outrageous. And then there's credit card debt. I mean, did you know Americans have $16,000 on average in credit card debt? That kills me. I've never had a penny of it, but it's not that I'm not empathetic towards that. Like I understand what it's like to be broke. I grew up broke. I didn't know it at the time because my parents were very good about their money, but we had none, but they made us feel special anyway. So I want you to know it's not hopeless because I did it. And I did it with four kids. I have a husband, four kids and three businesses. And next week we're gonna be debt free. And I wanna cry just thinking about it because I'm so freaking excited. I can start living life the way I want to now. I can spend time with my kids, two of them, which have some special needs. So I'm super excited about that. And I wanna give hope to anybody that feels like they've been told over and over there's no way out, that you're stuck. And if you feel stuck, stay with me. So here's what happened in America today if you didn't read the news or see it online. Remember back in 2008 when the big bubble burst? You know, we had the bailouts, we had the housing crisis, and nobody could pay their bills anymore. All of a sudden, it just burst. That was in 2008, and guess what happened today? Today, America went over that. We have more debt than we did on that day in 2008, which crushes me and it's not necessary. So that's why I wanted to do this video today. I just couldn't believe it. We're spending and spending and borrowing and spending money that we don't have, kind of like the government, right? <laughs> Except we aren't able to print it, you know, and it's de destroying families, it's destroying relationships, and I don't want that to happen anymore. So I wanna let you know there is a way out. So here's what we're gonna do. I want you to get a pen and paper if you're serious about getting out of debt. And these are simple things, but they're things that we don't take the time to do because we think they're silly. But number one is your mindset. So this is gonna to be tough love because I hear so many of my friends saying, oh, you know, I have it so rough. Maybe I have a disability and I can't work. And I understand that sometimes that is true. But if you have a cell phone, you can be a billionaire right now in today's world. Today's world, there's more people making money than ever. There's so much opportunity in America that we shouldn't be sitting here saying there's no way out because we're not stuck. So you need to look in the mirror and say, you know what, I'm stuck here because I'm choosing to be, maybe not consciously, maybe just subconsciously, you're choosing to stay stuck because you think there's no way out. You think that it's hopeless. So I want you to say to yourself, okay, what are the excuses that I've been using? Maybe my spouse racked up credit card bills and left me, okay? Okay. Well, if it's a month later and you haven't done anything about it and you're in the same situation, then you're choosing to stay there. Okay, it's tough love and I'm only saying this because I do love and care about y'all. So maybe you lost your job. Okay, guess what? There's plenty of other things you can do out there. Maybe it's not in your expertise of where you went to school, but find another job, start a business, start a blog, monetize it. There's so much opportunity. I went to school to be a physical therapist. Okay, got a lot of college debt. As soon as I graduated, my mom plunked me down against my will with a financial advisor who happened to be her best friend. And in four years, my debt was paid off, okay? I didn't know it at the time. Like I didn't, my parents never had debt, so I didn't really think that I would always have debt. But she saw the way the world was going, and so we planned for that. I'm so grateful now, you know, because most people don't plan for that. So really sit down and say, what excuses have I been giving myself to remain stuck? And then go ahead and figure out what you need to do to get rid of those excuses. So when I was a physical therapist, what do I do now? I don't do physical therapy anymore. For those of you that do follow me already, I quit cold turkey. I own an ice cream stand, didn't need a college degree, so that was my own business. Also started my own travel business. Didn't need a college degree, 
didn't need any money <laughs> to start that. And now I have an online business. I'm not a millionaire, but I'm doing something I love and generating income doing that. So it's possible. I am no better than any of you. I have nothing on you. The only thing that may make us different is that I had enough desire to be debt free that I took advantage of that and just kept going even though the last few years have sucked. I feel like sometimes I've wasted time paying everything off, but for the last two years, the only debt we've really had is our house. So we have decided to sell our dream house. This is something we built in 2007. We had tried and tried for our children and were told we wouldn't have any. So we settled into this tiny little house back in 2006. And the month we moved in, guess what happened? <laughs> we got pregnant, had our daughter at the end of 2006, and decided to build our dream house in 2007. Dream house, okay, so we were this close to being out of debt back in 2007, which is really good, because I graduated college in 1999. You know, in less than 10 years, we would have been debt free. But we made the mistake of saying, hey, we want this big fancy house, this big fancy car, right? Because that's what the world started telling us, or that's what I felt like the world was telling us that we weren't successful until we had those things. So that's what I worked for. I worked three jobs in physical therapy, one during the week, one weeknights, and one on the weekends. That was insane, people, right? That was stupid. Back then I didn't know it because I just wanted to be successful and to provide for my daughter. So we built our dream house and 10 years later, here we are, we are selling it. We're downsizing with four kids. We are simplifying our lives, hence the reason I'm here, obviously. And it's not easy. I won't pretend that it's all roses. I cry a lot because I love my house. You know, I don't want to admit that, but I do. I love my house, but it's just a house. I know what I'm telling you is not easy to hear. It's not going to be easy to do. Absolutely not. But if you have the desire and it's strong enough, you can get out from whatever it is that you are under. And I don't blame you totally. I mean, society really puts the pressure on to borrow, 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 keep up with the Joneses, keep up with the Kardashians, right? How ignorant sometimes we are, myself included, because I've been there. Okay, so that's step number one. You need to really focus and say, you know what, I'm gonna own this. I got myself into this or I've remained in this spot if somebody's helped you get to you into debt and I haven't really you know, figured out a plan to get out, so it, it is my fault. So now, from here on out tonight, you're gonna just move on, and this is what we're gonna do. Step number two, you're gonna hate me, but you're gonna love me, because it's gonna work. All spending stops today, all of it. Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go to a budget calculator or a budget creator online, or just take old paper and pen, and you're gonna figure out your income, what you take home, and you're gonna figure out your necessities. That does not mean you're gonna figure out your cable bill, your internet, your cell phone. The stuff that you don't need is not gonna be figured into your budget. You're gonna figure out your necessities first and then see what you're gonna do from there. Along with that, I'm gonna recommend that you save 10% of your check. If you have some left over, it's not gonna go to those luxuries yet. Saving comes before luxuries because heaven forbid something happened to you, you need some cushion there to provide for your family. So that's what I recommend. So go, you're gonna just, like I said, take your budget, start with your income per month, take 10% off the top if you're gonna have some left over, only factor in your groceries, maybe your gas to get to and from work, ride a bike if you can, save money that way. Whatever you can do to save money and stop spending it, you're gonna do tonight. I need to know that's hard, but that's just what's gonna be necessary because I can give you a plan for like a 10 year plan to be debt free, but guess what? You're not gonna stick to it. 10 years is a long freaking time, right? Who wants to do a plan for that long? I would rather suffer short term and get it done and live comfortably and a lot less stress to go along with that. The sooner, the better for me. So this is the fast way to do it. So you're gonna stop spending. And number three, you're gonna have a plastic surgery party. Get excited about this. You're gonna light candles. You're gonna get those plastic freaking cards. You're gonna start melting them, get the scissors and the knives and start slicing them up because those darn things are bringing people down. I mentioned before, $16,000 is the average credit card debt. It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart that those people are sending people credit cards, giving them spending limits way out of control and people are using them. They say, as long as I can make the minimum payment, I'm good. Well, that's why the government started making it mandatory that they put on your bill, you know, how long will it take me or how much will I have paid if I just make minimum payments for the rest of my life? If you've ever taken a look at that, that's it's insane the amount that we pay in interest. So right now you're gonna have that plastic surgery party, cut it all up and you're gonna spend this. And this hurts to spend, cash hurts, but it teaches. Like that's why I love cash. And if you're a fan of Dave Ramsey, you already know this. 
If you know Dave, he became a millionaire when he was in his 20s. He came from a very poor family, got his first you know, couple millions, lost it all, making stupid mistakes, mismanaging his money, doing things he, sh he knows he shouldn't have done. And then guess what? He created a multi-million dollar business after he went totally broke. So he's been a millionaire twice. And if he can crawl out of those rocks, there's hope for you, my friends, because you aren't nearly in the mess that he was. So I want you to think about that. And I, again, my whole message here is hope because the world is telling us it's hopeless and it's not, it does not have to be. And you know how I like to go against the grain when it comes to the world. <laughs> All right, so after your plastic surgery party, this is another hard step, but you need to do it. And this is, so this is happening tonight. Step number four is you're going to talk to people about what's happening because there's so many people drowning. If you look around, I think it's seven out of 10 houses are in major debt. And that's on any street in America. That's just not, you know, your local humdrum, not so great neighborhood. That's every street in America. You know, my neighbors, we live in a nice area, but I can tell you the people that are totally broke, even though it looks like they're millionaires, because it's true. The Joneses are broke. They're just putting on a front. And for you to keep up with them, you're gonna get broke too. So I want you to talk to people about what's happening. Tell your parents, you know what, I screwed up. And I'm not necessarily asking for a handout, but could you help me think of a way out of this? What can I do? Maybe at my job, can I pick up some extra hours? Can I sell something? You're gonna have a sale. You're going to go and find the crap in your house that you don't need and work on selling it. I don't care if you you sell it on eBay, Craigslist, whatever. Get rid of it, make some cash and put that cash away. And I know I'm just so passionate about this. I feel like I just wanna get in there and give you a big hug and say, you got this. But I'm getting so emotional because I'm, oh, I just, I get fired up about this. And I want so badly for you to experience that burden lifted off your shoulders. So you're gonna talk to people because there's people all around us that are drowning. And chances are, you know a ton of people in your position, but they just aren't telling you. Okay, so there's lots of people out there in that same boat and you can get out of this. So you need to talk about it though. People will have ideas for you. You just have to let go of that ego that says, I don't wanna tell anybody what's happening in my life. I don't want them to think I'm a failure. I don't want them to know my business, but you know what? There comes a point when things are so not right, so stressful and so burdensome that you have to do something. Cause if you don't do it now, it's just gonna get worse. I don't want that for you. So go ahead and talk to those people. I want you to make a list. That's number four tonight. And then number five, you're gonna make a plan. And I know that sounds kind of of abstract but I want you to sit down and I want you to think to yourself okay you know what maybe my work I can't get any more hours at work or I don't have overtime or whatever or maybe I just stink and hate my job okay I was in that boat I made great money but I wasn't happy so what could I do and this is something I said what could I do that would make me happy and replace that income of my old job plus so my answer was downsizing getting rid of all the stuff I didn't need my kids only are in one activity every season because I can't frankly afford the gas or the schedule and the stress of having them go every which way. It's just insane. I remember when my daughter was 18 months old, I had her in tap, ballet, and gymnastics. 18 months old, that was ridiculous. I was running somewhere every night for an 18 month old. Gosh, <laughs> so I've been there and done that and that's why I can tell you it's not necessary. Run with you know one thing, depending on you know what whatever makes them happy, I guess, what you feel you need to do, but you don't need to do it all. Don't feel like you have to be super mom or super dad, because you don't. They just want your love, they want your attention, they don't care about money or how great of a dancer they are in the end. Right now, it may seem like they do, and that's okay. It's okay to pursue their passion, but when it is you know, multiplied and compounded and consuming your whole life, you can back off and that's okay. Don't feel guilty about that. They will love you anyway. <laughs> All right, so make a plan. So think about that. Can you start your own business? People need their dogs walked. You know, people need their lawns mowed. Do you have a lawnmower? Anything that you can think of to pick up extra cash is gonna help you. And it's gonna suck for a while. It really is. But if you have a family and they're all on board with this and you can say, hey, wouldn't it be great next year at this time if we could do X, Y, Z? You know, maybe we can't go on vacation this year because we need to pay off X credit cards. But in the end, this is the goal. 
And when they're all on board, it's a lot easier. And, and also when you have accountability, remember I said go out and tell other people and ask them for help and for ideas. When you have accountability, they can check in and say, hey, how you doing? And that reminds you, hey, you know what? I really got to do this because I don't want to let these people down. I told them I was going to try to get out of debt and I want to do it. I want to show them that I can do it because guess what? You can. I hate seeing my friends suffer and I know it's possible. It's just takes some creative thinking and a lot of discipline, a lot of discipline, a lot of nights where you can't go out to eat and no nights don't go out to eat. I know that's hard. We work hard and sometimes we don't want to make dinner, but Hey, I mean, my family of six is like a $70 dinner, even with four little kids, you know, meals. It's like, it's crazy. So we just don't go out to eat unless it's really something special. Just think about your luxuries. You know, I don't necessarily know what they are, but if you have to downsize to one car, it might be tough. But if you're a stay-at-home mom and, you know, the husband works, let him have the car. Maybe you just have to coordinate a little better, but how much, you know, the average car payment is $470 a month. $470, that blows my mind. Like, I don't even know what kind of car that would buy, but I certainly could not afford that payment. <laughs> but, you know, do what you have to do. It's not gonna be easy, but I guarantee you that if you make a plan and you stick with it and you do those five steps tonight you're gonna feel better when you wake up tomorrow and say you know what i'm one step ahead of where i was yesterday because you are just being here and watching this video you're one step ahead of where you were half an hour ago all right so i know you got this so today it starts today's your day to climb out from underneath that debt and if you are someone that wants to have a way to manage your time when you're doing this, you know, set up a plan and figure out how you're going to accomplish this in even more depth, go to findyourfreetime.com. I'm gonna post the link right here on YouTube. I want you to go to that link. It's gonna teach you how to program your day so that you automatically know what you're gonna do every single day and you're not gonna waste time and you're not gonna forget what you need to do. And it's gonna keep track of all of those important tasks that you need to accomplish to get out of debt. It's gonna remind you, it's gonna spell it out for you. Today we do this, today we do that. So that's findyourfreetime.com and I want you to join me on that journey because I want you out of debt. So again, if you are new to YouTube or you haven't seen my videos, go ahead and subscribe. I'm gonna be with you weekly and I want you to succeed. That's why I'm here. So go ahead and subscribe and I will see you next week and head to findyourfreetime.com Grab that training video and go ahead and get out of debt.